Hello and welcome to this video where today we're looking at electric field strength. So just before we do that, I just wanted to remind you of a quick definition. When we looked at gravitational fields, uh, we defined a force field to be a region of space in which a body experiences a force. So we can kind of specialize that a little bit um, to when we look at electric fields um, to thinking about an electric force field being a region of space in which the charged body experiences a force. In other words, if, if something is charged up, then it will experience a force either attractive or repulsive. And just like we did with gravitational fields, we can, um, we can look at the field line patterns um, that are associated with two different types of fields. First of all, the radial field, which are these two. Uh, so these two are both radial fields radial fields or alternatively a uniform field which which is this one here um, so you know, on all three diagrams here we've got arrows showing in showing the direction of the field but if we look at these two the arrows are in different directions that's because we had to make a choice um, because we've got two types of charges we've got to decide whether or not these field lines show the direction that a positive or alternatively negatively charged object will go in. Now we choose um, just for, just we could have chosen the opposite one, but, we could, we, but we've chosen um, these arrows to represent what's gonna happen if we place a positive charge in this field. So we've got a positive charge here, we've put another positive charge in the electric field due to this positive charge that's in the middle. And obviously, because they're both, both positive, this thing is going to be repelled away from here. So that's what these arrows represent. They show the direction that a positive charge will move in. If we put it into an electric field that's there because we have a negative charge, obviously, uh, we have two different types of charge now, instead of them being the same. And so therefore, they will attract each other. So that's what these arrows represent. They show the direction that this positive um, charge will move in. So the arrows are defined so that they show the direction it, that a positive test charge would move in. And it's exactly the same for uniform field. If we have a positive plate and a negative plate, if we put um, a positive charge in here, then it will be repelled from the top and attracted to the bottom, so it will move downwards. So the electric field is in this direction. So electric field's got direction, and so electric field is a vector. So we'll define it. We're going to look at defining electric field strength. Again, in the same way we did with gravity, what we wanted is a quantity that's, that doesn't depend upon the size of the mass that's in that field. And again, we do the same with this thing. We, if we've got an electric field like this, we want to be able to say we want to be able to compare these two fields. And, but it shouldn't matter what type or the size of the charge we put inside this field if we want to compare them. So that's what the electric field strength is. And so this is our definition. So if, if you're ever asked to define electric field strength in words, um, then this is it. So it's the force per coulomb of charge that's exerted on a positive charge at that point. So in other words, it's given by this equation here, where F is the force that our positive charge would feel. So that's the force. Q is the charge of our of our kind of test charge, the charge that's inside here, and E is our electric field strength. So that's our electric field strength. We'll not write the whole thing out. Now force is measured in newtons, charge is measured in coulombs, so we're doing newtons divided by coulombs, so electric field strength has units of newton per coulomb. Okay, so basically it's the force, which and for to calculate the force, as we saw before in Coulomb's law, to calculate the force we need two charges. Um, this one kind of gets rid of this extra charge. So if we want to, so we're just looking at the strength of the electric field due to a certain charge. So um, we can obviously rearrange that. So if we knew the electric field strength and we knew the charge, then you could work out the force on an object simply by rearranging this equation here. Um, and very often in exam questions, they'll ask you to work out either F or E, and then they'll ask you to then calculate the other one using this equation over here. So let's have a look at these two different types of field. We'll have a look at the uniform electric field first. So we've got um, a potential, the source of potential difference, and it's connected to two conducting plates. And when we do that, what we end up with is we when, if we turn this on, then we'll end up with a potential difference across these two plates. And the potential difference across these two plates will be will be the same as the 
potential difference of the source. So there'll be a potential difference across here and here. And the top plate will be positive, the bottom plate will become negative. So this has got an excess of electrons on it, and this has got um, an absence of some electrons on it. So both of them are charged up, and there's an electric field that's set up between them. And the electric field goes from positive to negative. Now, the electric field strength depends upon two things. Um, as you can imagine, it depends upon the size of the potential difference across here. If you have a bigger potential difference, um, source of potential difference, you'll end up with a bigger potential difference here. And as you can imagine, if you've got a bigger potential difference, you're going to end up with more charge on these two plates. And if you've got more charge, then you're going to end up with a bigger electric field. What's not quite so obvious, perhaps, is, is that the electric field also depends upon how close the field how close these plates are so if, if you close these and put, and put them closer together then the electric field becomes stronger so that for a uniform electric field the electric field strength electric field strength is equal to the potential difference across the plates which is measured in volts and the distance between them the plates which is measured in meters. So D is the distance from here down to here. It's just the distance between these two plates. So because we're looking at potential difference divided by uh, meet, divided by distance, then electric field strength has a unit of volts per meter. Now you might go, hang on a minute, because you just said that it has a unit of newtons uh, per coulomb. Actually, volts per meter and newtons per coulomb are basically exactly the same. If you take both of them back to the SI units, then you'll actually see that they're actually the same unit. And you can use either. So you could use either newtons per coulomb. If you're asked for the unit of electric field strength, alternatively, you can use volts per meter. It doesn't matter. And um, as long as you remember one of them, then they're both absolutely fine. So let's have a quick look at a question for a uniform field. So this is the type of question you might, you might be asked. We have two plates that are 12 centimeters apart and they're connected to this five kilovolt supply. We want to calculate the strength of the electric field between the plates and the force that a four nanocoulomb charge would feel inside this field. So we'll do A first. So the electric field strength is simply given by the potential difference over the distance. We put our numbers in. The potential difference is 5,000 because it's five kilovolts. Divided by the distance in meters, well, we've got 12 centimeters, so that's 0.12 meters. And if we do that on our calculator, we end up with 4.2 times 10 to the 4 volts per meter. Or volts per meter, or alternatively, if you prefer, newtons per coulomb, like that. Uh, we've put this to two significant figures because the biggest, we've got both of our things here are both to two significant figures. So we'll have our answer to two significant figures as well. So we know what the electric field strength is. So now I want the force if we were then take, to take a charge and put it inside this field. So we saw before that E equals F over Q, where Q is the charge, this charge here. It's not the charge that actually makes up the electric field. Um, Q is the charge of the particle that's inside the field. So if we rearrange that, we get F equals E times Q. Now, electric field strength, we've just worked out to be 4.2 times 10 to the 4. The charge of the particle that's inside this field is um, 4 nanocoulombs. In other words, 4 times 10 to the minus 9. And again, if we do it on a calculator, we end up with 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. And because we're looking at the force, which is a vector, then it has a direction, so it's downwards. So the, electric, so the force that this particle will feel is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons in this direction. So that's uniform fields. Radial fields are very, very similar to the, gravita to the gravitational radial fields. So here we've got a radial field. Um, it's a positive charge, so the electric field is pointing outwards. Um, and if we start from our equation where we had the electric field strength is F over Q, if you've got two particles, for example, you can work out the force between them. So we'll have an electric field from this one, for example. And we could say, OK, this particle is inside this field. So what's the electric field strength where this particle is? Um, now, in order to work that out, we need to basically get rid of this particular charge here. So we need to get rid of, for in this case, Q1. So the force as we saw before, was equal to a constant, which is this thing, but we'll just write that as k, multiplied by q1, q2, over r squared, where r 
is the distance between these two charges. Now we want to know what the electric field strength is due to Q2, um, not Q1. So Q1 is like our test charge. So in order to work out electric field strength, we do the force divided by our test charge, in this case Q1. So if we divide this by Q1, we end up with F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared divided by Q1. So our Q1s cancel out. And we simply end up with F equals K Q over R squared. So that's where this comes from. Basically, uh, we take our equation for the force in a rate, we take to Coulomb's law, our equation for the forces, um, and then we divide it by this, and we end up with this equation here. So this is a slightly tidier version. You've got the electric field strength is equal to the constant multiplied by the charge, which is generating this field, divided by the radius squared again. Again, so let's have a let's have a look at a, a question. So here we've got a Van de Graaff generator, um, and it's got a dome that has a radius of 25. And then and when it's charged up, it's got a charge of 20 microcoulombs. So we want to know what the, what the field strength is at the surface of this dome. Now, in exactly the same way that we can do with gravity, um, we assume that actually the, the charge is all concentrated right in the center of this sphere. Um, so rather than it being all spread out, we assume it's in the middle, and then our equations still work absolutely fine. So... Um, we first of all start off by um, writing down the equation that we're going to use. So we're trying to find the electric field strength. And as we've just say, seen, it's equal to the constant multiplied by the charge of our object divided by the square of the radius. So if we just put our numbers in, well, our constant is the thing that we remember. So it's 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by Q. Well, Q is the charge. So that's our charge. So 20 microcoulombs. So micro is 10 to the minus 6. And then we divide it by the square of our distance. Well, the distance is the distance from the center out to the, the edge of our dome, um, which is basically just the radius. So the radius is given here. Again, we need it in meters, so it's 0.25 um, meters squared. And then we do it on a calculator. And again, if we look at this, everything's written to two significant figures. So our answer will be 2.9 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter or again if you prefer you can use newtons per coulomb so that's it for electric field strength um, we had a really quick look at electric field lines um, and saw the saw the different patterns for both radial fields for both positive and negative charges and also for a uniform field then we defined electric field strength and looked at how you can calculate both electric field strength and the force um, for a uniform field and you can also and then also how you calculate the electric field strength for a radial field if you wanted to know the force on a charged particle for example um, that you placed over here you do exactly the same thing that you did for um, the uniform field so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again soon